Just another song for the little man holding my hand, waiting for the day when he understands. There's these moments in life that really hit you straight in the gut. You can feel the way. First was your mother walking down the aisle, second was you, and you blew her away. And I think she's okay with that. You came out purple, screaming, and I just stared. You looked a little like a little grimace, your head was like a cone, caught your first minutes on a cell phone. The hair of a middle-aged man, funny-looking guy. You got cuter as the days went by. This is me at six weeks old. Kind of scary, huh? Why would I want one of my own? I grew up in the 80s in the small town of Etna, California. Happy and full of life. My dad was a wildlife biologist for the Forest Service. My mom, a homemaker. In 1981, my parents adopted my brother Todd from Korea. That was my family. When I was 10 years old, my parents gave me my first Instamatic camera, and that sort of set me on my path that I'm still on today. I like to put on a show and capture the moment on film for all to see. After high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do, except to get out of that small town and try to do something creative for a living. So I decided to go to the Art Institute of Seattle. That's where I met Kristen. Kristen Kelly Andrews was born and raised in Ojai, California. She had an ordinary childhood, discovering early on that she had a knack for photography. In 1995, she moved to Seattle to follow that dream. We both lived in the same student housing and met through a mutual friend. I don't know what she saw in me. After only three months of dating, we decided to move in together a little one-bedroom place on Seattle's Queen Anne Hill. I found a job at an internet company while Kristen worked at the Space Needle and then a photo lab. The years just flew by. After five years of being together, we decided to get married in our own special way. With both of us being such huge film buffs, we had a private ceremony in a movie theater projection booth while Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was playing. At that moment, neither of us really wanted a kid. The pet rats we had kept through the years filled in nicely and quietly. Our spare time was filled with making short films, a real passion for us both. But time, it does funny things. And after nearly eight years together, somehow both our minds had changed, and we began to casually try to get pregnant, letting fate decide for itself. And that's where our story begins. I think the police department are entirely too lenient. 
with these vicious exhibitions of sex. Dad? Yes? Where do babies come from, anyhow? Fertilization is the process whereby a single male sperm combines with a female egg to produce a new human life. One and only one spermatozoan enters the egg. And when it reaches the uterus, it settles down in this soft lining and begins to grow into a baby. Today is a high point in the romance of Bob and Mary. For them, the future looks bright. About nine months later, the baby is born. Through the vagina. This is how we all came into the world. Years ago, I found out I was going to be a father, and I'm pretty freaking scared about it. Um, you know, excited too, though. But uh, you know, it was unexpected, so I'm nervous and excited. I guess I don't know. It's pretty it's a surreal experience so far. I don't know if it's really sunk in yet. So this is to document the whole pregnancy thing. Um, looking forward to the next nine months. It should be an interesting ride. And then the rest of my life after that, I'll be completely different. It seems silly to say, because they're always there. But I suddenly began to notice that pregnant women, babies, and kids are everywhere. Anytime I saw any of those three, my thoughts immediately went to my own brewing offspring. It completely consumed my thoughts for the next few weeks. I felt like my life was spinning out of control, and I had to let somebody else in on my secret. You're not the first man whose wife had a baby. Well, it's the first time it ever happened to me. Oh, you're gonna have a baby. Relax, have a pickle. News to tell you, you're gonna be a grandpa. I mean, we were planning it, we just didn't expect it to happen, so quickly and easily. <laughs> You're about a little less than a month along. Yeah, there's a lot to do and a lot to think about now. I think it's time that we get the little, the brew maker, as we've been calling it, uh, on film here for the first time. Uh, this is Kristen. You picked me on an off day. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't done my hair and makeup yet. So what do you think of all this so far? Oh, well, finally getting used to it and pretty excited. A little nervous at first, but I know it's the right thing. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna be parents. It's weird. Feel so right. young, but ready. Going out with girls is fun. When you get older, you probably want to get married and start a family. So. It was a far cry to try, but I thought I'd try to hear some. No. You are due November 16th. We decided Dad picks the boy's name and <laughs> Mom picks the girl's name. We don't know what you're going to be. So what we've decided is every Sunday you become the other name that we pick. If you're a boy, you are Ash. <laughs> Next week, on Sunday, you'll be Mila. So, we'll see what you become, but we wanted it to be fair. Nine weeks old today. That's what the little sucker looks like. This right here is the head. It's a little arm. That's our little Ash. In three weeks, we'll be past the first trimester, so... We're all good. Everything looked normal to her. She said things looked great. The heartbeat looked normal and regular. So, it's all good. Yes, now you can buy all the baby things you want. <laughs> the ultrasound showed us that everything was coming along fine. We decided it was time to tell our friends. <laughs> Take a guess, Chezzy. So Chezzy will be happy if Brandon won't. I have no idea. This isn't going to be a house of two anymore. Really? Are you pregnant? Yeah. Oh my Holy god! god. <laughs> oh my That's god! That's so exciting! Yeah. You're not I'm, happy, Brandon! I'm gonna, I'll babysit for it. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Dude, your boys can <laughs> swim, man. <laughs> we, um, we found out officially on Monday. Holy Whoa. crap. Here, drink it down. You need it. You're a real pal. So, um, there's not going to be two anymore. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> when did you manage that? How did you do it? Everything was going so well that what came next caught us totally off guard. I have some bad news. Just had a uh, miscarriage last night. This is actually the worst part of it, is calling people. I guess we learned our lesson not to tell everybody so soon. Once we heard the heartbeat, they told us that it was like a really small chance. She'd been um, spotting all weekend, and then, um, uh, like last night, she like felt this pop. All the all this blood came out. We're actually we're doing pretty well with it. It was a uh, it's sad and. It's uh, disappointing, but you know we're glad to lose it now instead of it coming out as a sick baby or losing it later after we've even grown more attached to the idea. Next time it'll be more of a happy moment instead of such a surprise. Last time it was like a big surprise because it happened so quickly and I think that's maybe why it's not such a big deal. It wasn't like we've been trying for years and this was our only shot, but you know I think we'll, maybe we shouldn't have any problems having another one. Looking back on it all, I honestly have to say that my main emotion was relief. I simply wasn't ready for it yet. I thought that Kristen was handling it fine as well, but as the weeks went on, I could tell that the miscarriage was bothering her more and more. She felt like she had never mourned the loss of our baby. And just when she was reaching her lowest point, this happened. This is what Kristen woke me up with this morning. She just couldn't wait for me, or for the camera, and um, I don't know, I'm excited again, I'm happy, I'm much more ready this time, and uh, I guess here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> I guess I have to tell you how this happened, about three or four days ago, I decided I thought I was pregnant, but I didn't want to... Uh, didn't want to be too hopeful since we had the miscarriage and dear old Ross wanted me to do it on tape <laughs> and I couldn't wait for him to wake up because it was like 9.30 this morning. So I did it and discovered we were pregnant and then I had to leave so I had to go wake him up to tell him. So I showed him this cute little thing that, that says that we're pregnant. And he just kind of smiled with happiness, but rolled over to go back to sleep. <laughs> so, that's it. It's still really new. So it doesn't mean anything, but it means at least we get to try again. So, I'm very happy. On our way now. Can't turn back. Took a lot of courage to get on this train. About a month later, we made the trek down to my hometown of Etna. It was still early, but since we were there, we decided to tell my mom and dad again. I'll tell you something. Kristen's pregnant again. Oh! <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> it's still kind of early, but we wanted to tell you in person, so we're telling people. We just found out, actually, so oh. we're only about seven weeks. So it's early. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, Ross, hug your mom. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Oh. Ready to be grandma? <laughs> Want to let you know that you're going to be a granddad. Oh, really? again? <laughs> again. <laughs> Give it a really? shot. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, when oh, is this going to wow. be now? That's exciting. Um, April 30th, so we're only seven oh. weeks. So. <laughs> but we wanted to tell people while we were here. Oh, oh how exciting. exciting. Instead of calling. It's not yeah. as fun on the phone. <laughs> well, it sure is happening fast and fast, isn't I know. It? Very Boy. fast and fast. Some of these, uh, you devil, you. Very good. <laughs> Nine months of camera in the face. <laughs> And everywhere else. And everywhere else. <laughs> okay, Molly, let's take a look. 
most couples find that you know they kind of have to get somewhat past the time of the first miscarriage mm -hmm. before they can relax and Feel more. bond and all that stuff. Yeah, I didn't feel pregnant at all last time, mm -hmm. and this time I definitely have lots of different <laughs> random symptoms. Oh, so, good. so for me, it feels <laughs> more real and. I feel better about it actually. I mean, last time I didn't even, I would have said I wasn't pregnant if mm -hmm. someone didn't tell me. Could be as early as April 5th, wow. up to two weeks after, which is like um, May 9th. Wow. Chances are with a first baby, it'll be on the later end oh, so rather than the earlier right. end. Okay. But that five week span is all normal. We okay. consider the baby full term when you get to um, 37 weeks with 40 weeks being the due date. Now, this has gained a lot of weight. Yeah, I mean, you, you have gained in certain places, and yeah. that's normal. So what we're seeing here, very unclearly, is um, this is the uterus. This black, like, triangular thing is the, the, the sac, the bag of waters. And this little thing that looks like a lima bean is the baby. So how do you feel about seeing your baby for the first time? Well, it's still early, but I'm pretty excited. It was nice to see the heartbeat really thumping away. So I was like, he's big, he's so tiny. <laughs> but it was nice, it made me happy, so. Kristen's mom and grandma wanted to be closer to their new grandchild. They decided to make the move from Giddings, Texas to Newport, Oregon. Kristen drove down to help them find a house. So I went to see Grandma, and she had this cute little bag that she brought on the airplane, and G Mom picked out this little blue hippo. About this, these little shoes. And then look at these socks. She had to get this blanket because it had a cow on it. Not that a newborn needs shoes. Frog bathrobe, and you can't have a bathrobe without bath towels. Beginning of tons of stuff. What's the significance of today? Today is the day we had our miscarriage. Monday. So, a little nervous, but things feel good. It'll be fine. I just want to get past today and I'll feel better. <laughs> How do you feel about the heartbeat? It's so cute. I love it. It's nice to know that it's still there and things are sounding right. looking into doulas and then asking around and then I had a friend recently say you have to get a doula I wish I had one what we were interested in which was just you know to have someone there for support and to kind of be the the button pusher mm -hmm. for everything because being new at it we don't really know what to expect we all have the same goal to get the baby out so ironic thing is that you can't prepare you can't for something really you don't know what's going to yeah, happen. You can't yeah. really prepare. Yeah. That's why it's nine months. Yeah. Thank God. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. here to help you talk through these things to, to get to the point where you feel like you're making the right decisions okay. for yourself. Are you okay with having a doula? Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know if You're a little weird at first just because it was... Yeah, well, really I'd, never, I'd was. never even heard of it before. Mm -hmm. She I'm brought actually it up surprised. a couple of weeks ago. A lot of people don't know. I get the jitters around these people that get themselves all wrapped up in their kids. Why, Frank, what's the matter with children? Baby, it sounds the same. I'm curious how big he is now. Let's okay. see, 20 weeks? Mm hmm So the baby's about 11 and a half ounces and about 10 inches long. Wow. Big. That's pretty big. <laughs> so little. <laughs> He's so cute. He's about the size of our rat. <laughs> I thought it was a girl for so long, so now I think it's a boy. So. Okay. It'll be wonderful, whatever it is. Because no. <laughs> we'll love it so much. So what are you in there? I'm kind of going with what you're saying because you're more in touch with it right now. Uh, <laughs> so I'm guessing a boy as well. Really? Yeah. All right.
I don't really care. I can't drink it with you. I just get a few shots. <laughs> <sighs> Want some? <laughs> so do you ever wonder if it's ever gonna work out right? Have you ever seen think about what you did last night? It's a boy. He said 100% it's a boy, so. <laughs> Gma's laughing. Little Ash. Ash, I just want to tell you that you're so lucky that you're named after a Bruce Campbell movie character. Everyone I know is very jealous of you. Yeah, it seemed like everything was fine. He said all the measurements seemed to work out right and all that stuff, so sounds good. We're at 19 weeks officially, so yep. Countdown's on. <laughs> what kind of advice do you have for us? I don't know what to say about it because I wasn't particularly nervous with my first child. Well, how do you feel about it? <laughs> I'm very excited. I yes. hope you are. I'm nervous, but yes. I think it'll all work out. And well, she's going to be a perfect mother. Yeah. Okay, next. What are we doing now? We had a bit of a gift that we wanted to give you. Or I'll give you a bit. I'll tell you. Um, uh, a few months after, well, now you know Ash is born, <laughs> yes. we're going to be moving to Ashland. What? <laughs> you are? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best gift. <laughs> What do you think of me being a dad? Huh? Freaky. Freaky. <laughs> Freaky. Are you excited, Spence? Are you looking Freaky. for? Are you excited about Ash being born? Yeah. I know you are. Do you have any advice for new parents? Um, patience. Tolerance. Just be ready for a really different life. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Happy There's to be an uncle. Dish. Yeah. So we are debating getting rats uh, because of Ash coming and moving and the hardships and such. But it's been like five days since we've our last baby Giselle died, and it's been torture around here. <laughs> so. We're getting baby rats tomorrow morning. And then for about two days there, I was like, well, do we really want to get rats? Are we sure we want to do this? <laughs> well, because all I could think was, are we going to have time, blah, blah, blah. But then I think, you know, everybody has kids, everybody has dogs, and they still handle, you know, taking care of everybody. So why can't we handle two baby rats? We just got to Grandma's house in Newport, and we're very excited, and she doesn't know about Adriana and Selma. So we're gonna go surprise her right now. So let's go. Who who Oh where's mom? Come here. Oh, oh you got it! Oh, oh. Who's this? We had to surprise <laughs> you. We oh, missed oh, you. You didn't you just, just couldn't stand it, could you, Ross? No. Are you excited about being a great grandma? Oh, very much so. And I am so pleased that it's a it, it's boy. I think this little fellow is just going to be perfect. <laughs> I just can't wait for him. And Kristen has got a wonderful attitude. So have you. Um, both of you are, are pleased about him, ready for him. You act like you're going to be, I think, the best kind of parents. Okay. I can't believe this is 26 weeks. I know, six months. What are we gonna do when it's nine months? You're not gonna be able to walk. I'm not gonna be able to walk. <laughs> I'm a badass mama. <laughs> when I didn't want kids and you said that I, 
I really should consider it because I, that was the greatest thing that ever happened to you. That, that actually changed my mind. Ah, home sweet home, the little nest, where after work a man can rest. Kristen's been trying to get me to, to feel Ash kick and move, and this week I really, I really got to feel him like more than ever. He's, uh, he's getting bigger, and it's really making it real. Feeling him kick really hard and roll around in there is really kind of bringing it home. Had a first birth class today. What was the best thing you learned from it? And a reminder that my body is meant to do this. No wonder that hurts so bad. Because yes, there's been some uh, serious concerns of how this baby's coming out. <laughs> so uh, it's nice to have the reassurance that it will happen. It will have to happen. The lash has to come out. How about you, Dad? Wasn't anything I learned, I guess. I was seeing the video of the birth. It's pretty sobering. Looks intense. <laughs> I'm just happy I'm not you. <laughs> In the middle of things, with everything moving along well, you may suddenly wonder how the baby can possibly get through that small opening. Don't worry, you'll stretch enough. So, uh, foreshadowing here. <laughs> I'm you just look through What do you think of that? What do I think of this? Yeah. I think he's really cute. Mm -hmm. Feel Ross. Ross. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's good. Well, just wait till you get your own. Oh, there's no one like your own. March. Spring training. One last getaway before my life was forever changed. Came back to a, a little different house. Uh, it's a little more baby friendly now. I'll, I'll show some of the things that are new. Kristen's nursing station. All Ash's stuff that he needs. He'll be sleeping right below us and as you can see he takes up a good portion of the bedroom that's why we're getting out of here when he was gone it was like that was my way of getting a chance to finally get stuff together it seems like forever to wait 40 weeks but in the end it's like so such a great process to get through your anxieties and your excitement and all the preparation and and then in the end I also have had you know a good connection with Ross one day I just woke up and it was like okay, I'm ready. When all bef you know, when for like two months I was like, oh man, you know, are we going to be able to do this? How are we going to do this financially? You know, all these worries were in my head and then just one day out of nowhere I woke up and I was like, oh, all right, let's have a baby. Are you afraid of having a baby, Mary? No, I'm not. Because after all, people have been having babies for thousands of years. And nowadays, doctors have so many ways of making it safe. I've definitely started the I'm too achy, I'm too tired. Mm -hmm. Mode, moving, hurts. Just your bones. Just all my hips and, and hips. yeah, pelvic mm -hmm. and everything is just very, it's really getting sore. Yeah. Last time I was with you, you, you know, you didn't have a lot of concerns about being regretful about any choices that you were making or afterwards. Correct. So, mm -hmm. so I feel like, okay, that's yeah. going to be... It's going to be moment to moment. Moment to moment. Right. I feel like that's the only way to get through labor, honestly, because you're just setting yourself up for disaster. Mm -hmm. You go in expecting one thing, and how can, you know, I think maybe just learning in birth class, too, you know, you, here's everything that could happen, here's all your options, you know, the baby's in charge, is pretty much what she says, you know, it's like, okay, that makes sense, you know, because the baby needs, and she says, you need to work with the baby to help it out, pretty much out of your control, was kind of the message I got. It's a very intense way of looking at just going about everyday life, you know, mm -hmm. you, you are hungry, you go and get food, you have to go to the bathroom, you know, you, you cut yourself, you, yeah. yeah, you get a band-aid, it's right. like you're just taking, taking care of your needs and responding to what your body needs. It just gets zinc, very intense. <laughs> <laughs> and very urgent, I guess, yeah. I should say. It's word. like, oh, I gotta do this now, instead of, oh, I guess I should do this. <laughs> it's, yeah. Get out of my way. I have to do this now. <laughs> That's too many words. Let's move. Yeah. We are 37 and a half weeks. Can't believe it. It's already here. It's so fast.
strange feeling like nothing I've ever felt before. I'm very excited and very nervous at the same time. So much anxiety and you know, so much looking forward to something at the same time. My body is finally wearing down and saying, okay, this is getting overwhelming and time to slow down and time to get ready. I'm really looking forward to that, that first couple of weeks with him. It's hard, um, which I'm sure all in all it's preparing me for you. Kristen and I are just going to get to spend it as a family and get to learn how to live together. And You're going to bring such great joy to our life. It's amazing how much I love Ash already. I know once we have you, we're not going to know what life's like without you. I haven't even met him. I haven't even looked him in the eye yet. And there's just so much love for him. It's just incredible. You're just so loved already, and you're not even here, so I can't wait for you to be here. Oh my goodness. Yes. Beautiful. Big baby. Big, beautiful baby. Well, last appointment after yours, my wife did an ultrasound, and he was facing out. Right. So I've been doing all my poses and stuff. So. Okay, good. You know, just by looking at the shape of your belly, there's that sort of concaveness. Still? Yeah, and so it just makes me think that that's probably still the case. Let's measure. 42? It's not a little baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's equivalent to the weeks you're at. So say at 26 weeks, I'm really 30 centimeters. That's big. I measured like 42, 43 centimeters last Wednesday, and I'm only at 38 weeks. So they're saying he's things are bigger than they want to let go any further. I'm going to urology to get an ultrasound to make sure everything's okay. Somebody's the proud father of triplets. Triplets? Two boys and a girl. Oh. <sighs> what do you say? Eight, thirteen. Yep. So, big boy. You have to see his ear, his hair. His hair was cool. He had a huge scrotum. Jeez. <laughs> big balls, boy. That's my boy. <laughs> we kept wondering if he was going to drop, but because I kept measuring bigger, it was saying that meant no. Well, you're in good shape, really. You're like three centimeters dilated. And the cervix is very soft. Um, it's probably about one and a half centimeters long. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Let me see that little baby. It's still pretty high up there, actually. You know, if we wanted to try and induce you, your cervix is very inducible. Okay. <laughs> uh, once you get into active labor, that given a reasonable amount of time that your cervix is going to dilate and the baby's head is going to come down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's especially what we'll be watching for, is the de descent of the, the baby's head. Pelvic Yeah, because right. the still, baby's still pretty high. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's not to say that the baby's not going to come down, but I think it'll be important that we really follow that and make mm -hmm. sure that happens at some point. And if it doesn't, then you have to think maybe this baby's too big and it's not coming out. I mean, I just don't want to get so far into it and have those complications. Right. Well, I'd rather I, just opt for the C-section to avoid it. If, well, I think if you have a normal course of labor, you get to complete and you have a normal descent of the baby's head, then that is encouraging fine. that the baby is going to come out. Your cervix has already done a lot of work. You know, usually your cervix is closed and long and and right now I can get my fingers in there easily. Mm -hmm. It's very soft. It's about one and a half centimeters long, usually like two to three centimeters long. Your body's definitely starting to, for you to get ready. Mm -hmm. I suspect that maybe things might start happening in the next week or so. Mm -hmm. I don't, can't say that for sure. Right. Now that it's getting close, how are you feeling? It's like a bomb waiting to go off at any time. <laughs> so close. It's like the longest nine months and then bam. Now all of a here. sudden it's here and any day now he can be in our arms. Thoughts on how we're gonna get through this? <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's like one of those things once we're in it that it'll just we'll go just fine. Kind of like I'm scared too. now but it'll probably be okay once it's going. It'll just be important to get him out and then we'll have to have him. No, in our that's arms. scary too. <laughs> I'm gonna be nervous at work all day. Uh, 
every time the phone rings, my heart will probably start racing, and, uh, I, like, barely slept last night, I probably woke up, like, every hour thinking about it, so, it's just a very weird time, kind of want it over with right now. Looking like the turkey's done? <laughs> when I heard that baby cry, I thought it was yours. <laughs> Everybody's having them except me. With only a week left till her due date, Kristen starts her time off from work. How you doing? Fine. Happy to get out of the house. <laughs> it's only yeah. day two of being home by myself. And it's pretty hard. Good. Getting a lot of rest. Happy. Excited. Anxious. Nervous. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Been home three days now. And let's see, I've had a phone call from just about everybody, every day, saying, Oh, have you had the baby yet? Now, wouldn't I call if we had the baby? So, and that's only like three days. Mm -hmm. We got whenever time left till he's born to deal with this. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know, having some different feeling contractions. Nothing painful. So I'm keeping track of them just in case. Not quite sure if this is it yet or what, but uh, I fully expect to be woken up at like <laughs> four in the morning. Boy, this is a life. It is lovely, isn't it? We're still here. <laughs> so kiddo. When are you gonna come out of there? You're killing us with anticipation. Last night doesn't mean nothing. It means something. <laughs> it's alright, one more day together. Here we are, week 40, waiting for this kid to be born. So you're almost at your due date. Yep. And baby moving around the way you're used to? Running different. out of room. Yeah, but the running out of room <laughs> syndrome is normal. Is Plenty of big up? babies come <laughs> out vaginally just mm -hmm. fine. It's just, you know, very hard to predict. And the other thing that's hard to predict, you know, when we talk about big babies is, you know, like at what point, at what moment, what day, what week do they get too big? You know, mm -hmm. we also don't know that. I mean, right. your baby might have been too big for weeks already or not right. you know it's just very hard to tell when i feel the baby's head this way my impression is that the head isn't way way low in the pelvis mm -hmm. yet and that you know probably has something to do with the baby's size and that could be a sign that the baby's just not going to come down in the pelvis and you know is already kind of big for you mm -hmm. but we'll see i mean we both felt like it was going to be last thursday and just because we were already three centimeters and not that that mm -hmm. totally meant anything, but it just seemed like, well, he must be close if we're already there. And we thought maybe this weekend then, and nothing. It's unpredictable and babies have their own timetable and they don't tell us about it. First step, removing pillows. That's the hard part. <laughs> I have risen from my pillows. Well, <laughs> you're so mean. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Ash is uh, three days overdue now. We're both very ready for him to, to come out, I think. We've been enjoying our last days of freedom and quiet. Just been very anxious for him. Like, it's been almost two weeks since we found out that Kristen was three centimeters dilated, so we've been expecting him, like, every day since. And Kristen and I are both getting sick of just being in public. <laughs> it's very annoying that people just, it's like they've never seen a pregnant woman. Everybody looks, everybody smiles, seems like everybody's got to say something. So we're just ready for uh, that to be over as well. I don't have anything to worry about. He's only like four or five days late, and even then that's not really late. It's just past his due date, and it's just been irritating me that I've been uptight because everybody else prior to her have like freaked me out about how big he is, and well you should have had him by now, and I don't know. And it's just been keeping me on edge, you know. Kristen's been having some mild contractions, um, and 
Our original guess before our 10 other guesses was <laughs> May 4th. So we'll see if that comes true. So Kristen's been having some mild contractions all night. Again. Again, but... <laughs> A little more frequent. And I'm waiting for them to hurt. They're supposed to hurt. They're not hurting. But I don't really expect them. Again, he's going to make me go to work. <laughs> I just know he is. Yeah, well, we'll see. But of course he'll come when we're not expecting him. Everybody gets a little impatient for the baby toward the end of pregnancy. That is... Everybody but the baby himself. He's in no hurry at all. Hi, Ash. You're about a week past your due date right now. And um, I know it's really comfortable and warm and quiet in there. And that this, this is a big, scary world that you're coming into. But uh, your mom and I are really looking forward to meeting you. And we really want to start a family, so it would be nice if you came out soon. We, uh, we love you, and we just can't wait to meet you. So, hope to see you soon. Love ya. 11 p.m., about to go to bed. Um, giving up on guessing it's going to be night or whatever. Just going to let it happen when it happens. But, um... Might be tonight, she says. <laughs> Why? Because they're getting pretty painful. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this will get interesting. I thought we should start keeping track. Since they hurt. Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I think I put my shirt on. Do you want to... Try to go to bed or no? Oh, I can't. Yeah. I can't sleep. No way. I'm having to breathe through them. Huh? I just need to make sure how far they are and how long they are. Maybe it's nothing, but I doubt it. Alright, so we're staying up? I think we better. Just for a little, a little bit. while. Keep track. We will see what's going on. Assess the situation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Turn this off for now, but we'll see what happens. So it's early, but I just wanted to catch you and let you know I think it's happening. It seems like four ish minutes is the average. I'm about to have another one right yeah. now. I figured I would stick it out here until my water broke or until I just felt like I needed to go. I'm just glad I get this going. Oopsie. About time, kid. <sighs> it's okay. He came to be one. I don't know. Can't believe we're having a baby. <laughs> Ready for this? Be a long night. Mom's making you a brother. We'll be back in a couple of days. I guess we should give you some more food. It's about a 1 a.m. Kristen's contractions are like two minutes apart right now. I'm getting in the car to drive up there. Keeping pretty calm right now. Doing good. Uh, Kristen's doing good too, but uh, definitely you can tell the pain's getting to her. We'll see how it goes the rest of the night. Oh, there's Alyssa. Good morning. It's a good big party. Yeah, it's a party. In the triage room. I might be able yeah. to tell a little better how dilated you are. You know, I think you're about five to six. Uh, wow. Dang. Yeah. Mm. Now let's call it six. Okay. Alrighty. That's good. That's good news. Yeah. She's in active labor. These are contractions that change cervixes. Mm-hmm. Pew, <laughs> take it. Sweet. Okay, ding. Doing very good, honey. <laughs> Thanks. Very proud of you. Melissa's helping a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I always surprise these people when they get into it. <laughs> oh, I'm just sitting here. Hmm. TikTok. Hmm. <laughs> Most of them have been okay. It's the ones that when I'm going back to peak again, like these, I'm sure I can get worse again. And 8.8 centimeters, big bulgy 
What is that? That's eight centimeters. <laughs> Come on, Ash, you can do it. 7 a.m., um, really exhausted. Uh, just really kind of want it to be over with them. It's hard to listen to Kristen be in so much pain. Um, I know she's dealing with it really well, but it's still hard to watch her go through with that. And I'm um, really excited to meet Ash, but really scared at the same time. There you go. Keep going, right like that. Uh, good, do it again. Uh, My feeling is this is a big baby, mm -hmm. and it's been a few hours now. I mean, you s sort of got to eight with that bulging bag, mm -hmm. and then really kind of snapped back to mm -hmm. six. This is a message saying that this is not the way this baby should come out. And you sure have given it a valiant <laughs> try. My recommendation would be to go to a C-section. If that's what they recommend, then I'm fine with it. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I mean, if we're going to stay this way, then I don't want to keep doing it. Right. Would you feel like you didn't try something or, you know, like you missed? No, I definitely feel like I've earned my okay. efforts. He's going to come out one way or another. And mm -hmm. That's just the most important thing. Okay. Let's get this baby. Yeah.
that you're here. You made it. Hi. Very glad to see you. <laughs> hey, Dad. Well, we had him. Yeah. Good looking guy. Had dark hair. Jeez, he's starving. He's uh, 9.7 pounds. Hi, sweetie. Hi, look at those beautiful eyes. 3 a.m. Trying to breastfeed. Seems to be working, but try to tell. I just want to look at you all day. I oh, know. Life is hard. Isn't he sweet? So yeah, it was just a really weird experience because it was almost like, I mean, just being movie lovers, it was like being in a movie. It was so mm -hmm. weird. The only thing I clearly remember was him crying. It was so worth everything for him because he's just so great. Day one was very weird. Uh, it was very surreal. It didn't seem like he was our kid. It seemed more like uh, we were watching him or something and I just couldn't believe that he was ours. And yeah, but today, it's very obvious that he's ours. I've been taking care of him all day and trying to get him to feed and uh, changing his diaper. It's new, it's different, and it's a little fun. Some of it's frustrating. In the end, it's all worth it. Going home for the first time. Somebody's not happy. Alright, let's go. Dog? Oh no, we need to take him home. How's daddy? Good. Driving his family home. <laughs> First time. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. <sighs> Thank goodness we're home. <laughs> we'll see what our neighbor thinks of that noise. <laughs> Our bedroom. Our bedroom. It's gonna be your bed. It's huge now. <laughs> it's weird to have them home. It feels like real. It is real. It's real now. You're at our house. day two with Ash home and last night was a little rough getting used to him and getting used to his schedule he, he seemed to like to sleep most of the day and then was up most of the night we stayed up all day of course and we like just went back to our regular schedule we're learning slowly but surely you're a fussy boy I know just gotta keep trying getting some Quiet alone time with Ash. My favorite time. Oh, yeah, because he's quiet. He's not falling. Today is my 28th birthday. Ash is now 10 days old, and he is about the best birthday present I could ever wish for. He's just a cool little guy. I'm getting pretty used to him. It's funny how far we've come so quickly. Really enjoying it, but uh, it's also a ton of hard work. <laughs> It's pretty much a full-time job. Hi guys, I'm Ross Williams, brand new dad. And if you don't want to be like me, with little sleep, no freedom, and your life irreversibly changed forever, let me tell you about a little secret that women keep when they're thinking about having a baby. Now these may look like any other pills that your wife or girlfriend have sitting around. And they look innocent enough, just like another bottle of vitamins. But look closer, prenatal. It's a word you may not recognize, and what it really means is pre-baby. This is what any well-informed woman will take when they're preparing to be impregnated. Look for the signs and don't let it happen to you. Thank God, I would have vomited this thing didn't have hair to it. Hey baby, you just spit all over yourself. That's not how you meet your friends. 
Right, Brandon, what do you think? I like him. You do? He's my friend, yeah. Okay, good. Cool. <laughs> this is an He's attractive young really man right here. <laughs> Ten times prettier than we ever thought. <laughs> <laughs> feeling, even if he's crying. Look at that face. That's a G-ma face. Uh, oh. that's, that's, that's an axe face. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, you too. Oh, there he is. Hi, hi Ash. It's Grandpa. <laughs> Say hi. Uh, hey. Sure, the Grandma. He's hey. not as big as you expected, is he? Yeah, it's hard to remember that far back, isn't it? <laughs> so do you think he looks like Ross? Or can you remember? I think he's more of a combination. He yeah. seems to be. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how much people tell you how much your life is going to change, you just can't prepare yourself. It's been pretty much non-stop work. Give up all your personal freedom. You can't prepare yourself until you live it. And it's very hard. And Sometimes I don't think it's worth it, but, um, you know, when I look at him and he's cute and quiet and attentive and looking at me, it's, you know, it's all worth it. But um, it's hard at the times when he's crying at 4 a.m. and you just want to go to bed. I don't know. We'll make it through it. I'm uh, wishing he was about 5 right now, but uh, I'm sure he will be before we know it. Right when you think you can't take any more, things kind of like that change. I think you like them. Oh, I love them to death, of course. <laughs> mm. It just gets cuter every day. You know, it takes a long time to get attached to your baby. Yeah. People think it's like, boom, instant love. and It's not often that way, mm -hmm. especially when you really think it's going to be that way. I think anticipating that, oh, it's unconditional love, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I didn't dislike him, but I definitely wasn't like, instantly attached to him. I mean, I was like more amazed still that he was ours and we were bringing him home and mm -hmm. now he's more that way to me for sure. Than... Now we're at home. Dad's gone back to work this week. It's been really nice actually. I mean, we miss Daddy very much. <laughs> we love having him around. It's also really nice to have some time alone and get to work out our own schedule. How's it been going back to work? <laughs> All right. Going nice thing I would say is that it makes me miss Ash more and that instead of wanting to uh, get away from him I want to see him more. Aww. You were worth everything in the whole world and my mom was right. You're the best thing that could ever happen to me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm really not enjoying the baby thing. I love talking to him when he's in a good mood and he's laying there on the floor, but that's only, you know, an hour or two a day. Most of the time we're dealing with him crying, like he looks like he's about to. Uh, I better go make a bottle. Constant feedings and, and crying and, and the not sleeping is really, really tough. I love him to death and I, I can't wait for him to be grown up so I can show him the world. But right now it's just, it's all about taking care of his needs just 24-7. I'm lucky that I have such an amazing partner in Kristen that she, she takes care of him so well and, and she just has the most amazing patience. I really can't believe what she does with him dealing with him in the middle of the night when he's crying and not sleeping and she's got no sleep and we need to take the camera That's to him sleeping to bed <laughs> I'll probably look back at this time and forget all the hard chips and remember his cute little face and just how he looks at you right now which is pretty wonderful now, now, now. Let's see a great big smile from the great big man. What kind of advice do you have for new parents? Well, I'd primarily say just relax. Don't, don't get too tight, you know. Just relax and enjoy the baby. Yeah. And then Gima and Ash and I get to take a special trip to Ashland. Mm -hmm. Yes. So exciting. Mm -hmm. Can you go find our home? Yeah, our first trip to Ashland. Huh. We're going to Ashland for two days. Look at the trunk. <laughs>
It's full. We come here for 10 days. It looks the same. <laughs> Find us a nice place. We will. We will. I just found out that uh, Kristen found us a place. It's a townhouse, uh, kind of a, you know, one step up from this place. We're very excited to be moving. I've been in Seattle 10 years. Uh, we've been together in this apartment for eight. You know, Ash will never, never know this town. I'd much rather Ash grow up in a small town. I grew up in a small town and I had a really wonderful childhood. I guess I'm trying to give him my childhood in some way. I don't know. I'm really looking forward to starting over. The rats and the boy, all that's left in our place. Goodbye, 904 first door. <sighs> <laughs> I know, it's really weird. Very strange to be leaving here. Uh, <laughs> okay. I know, starting our whole new life. Those first three months of Ash's life were the toughest of my own. The steep learning curve of being a new parent, the very little sleep, mixed with the everyday normal stress made it almost too much to bear. Looks like a pretty nice place. Once we are settled in Ashland, it all seemed to get a little easier. Ash started to sleep through the night. We were comfortable in how to take care of him. After that, Ash began to grow and learn at an alarming rate. There he goes. Go get Mr. Monkey. Go get Mr. Monkey. <gasps> Yay! Yay! <laughs> he was quickly changing from our little baby into a little boy. Our love for him grew daily as well. Most of my adult life, I have been looking into my past with fondness, missing days gone by. We're looking towards the future with great expectations, that somehow my life would be better if this or that would happen. And as it turned out, Ash was the this that had happened. He taught me how to live in the moment. I know that every day with him is precious, that he won't be this small or rely on me so much for very long, that before I know it, he'll be grown up and off on his own, that I'll look back on this time and miss him greatly. Ash is now over two years old. It seems like it has all happened overnight, like we're suddenly waking up with this crazy but wonderful child running all around our house. Those horrible thoughts that first crowded my mind are gone. Nothing but a bad memory playing out on videotape. I've come a long, long way from the guy so reluctant to be a father. Now I embrace every minute of it. I have taken that love so far that I am now a stay-at-home dad, spending every single day with him. Don't get me wrong, there are still tough moments to be had but the good far outweighs the bad. I'm having the best time of my life and I never want it to end.
Kristen and I are even talking about having another one. We're ready to take the biggest journey in life all over again. All right, I'm going to stop it right there. It's over 15 years later. The first cut of this movie was finished in 2004. It played in a few film festivals, but never officially got released. Every year, I would mean to finish it, but something always seemed to get in the way. Mostly, my own laziness. But thanks to a global pandemic, I have a little extra time on my hands, and I felt like finally putting this baby to bed. We've come a long ways from where we were at the end of the original film, and it really could be a whole film onto itself. But I'll keep it short and just add this little coda to the end here. It took us a while, but we did have another kid. You know, you keep saying, Mama, his belly's getting bigger. You? Mm-hmm. It's because there's a baby in there. If you put a lot of food in there, your, your big belly, if a baby comes out? Not from eating dinner, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be a big brother. What do you think of that? <laughs> what are you acting? <laughs> what do you think of that, Ash? What do you think of being a big brother? Look at Mama and Dada, please. Are you yeah. excited? You think that's exciting? Mm -hmm. Ash's sister Zoe was born in October of 2009. It took us five years to decide to have another kid. because having Ash felt so all-consuming that we couldn't conceive of having to take care of another baby, until Ash was a little more self-sufficient and starting school. Zoe's babyhood seemed to go much smoother than Ash's. We had learned most of the lessons we needed with Ash, and the hardships of sleepless nights, endless diaper changes, and crying fits all seemed to pass much quicker and with much less drama on our end. Ash is now 16, and we couldn't be prouder. They've dedicated their life to dance and performance, and they'll be off to college and or living on their own in little over a year. It's all passed by so quickly. And like I said at the original ending to this film, I do look back at that time with great fondness. I really miss the little boy who needed me so much and wanted to do nothing but play. Zoe is now 11, full of life, always creating art, dedicated to saving the oceans, even writing her own kids book about it. She loves Ash, her friends, school, and video games. All of our lives are so much fuller with her in it. Da, 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 da. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Daddy, daddy, daddy. A lot has happened to Kristen and I in the past 15 years. Just before Zoe was born, we bought a house in the next town over. And the kids spent 10 happy years there before it burned down in a wildfire just a few months ago. We're planning on rebuilding a new home in the same spot. We've added and lost dogs, cats, and many more rats to the family. Kristen continued to work full time while I was a stay at home dad for most of Ash's early years. And then I had the pleasure of doing the same for the first four of Zoe's life as well. During that time, I slowly built my own video production business and finally went full time with it in 2014. Kristen was able to quit her job and dedicate herself to continue raising the kids, helping them follow their passions and her own passion of photography. No! Get that way! I probably will always look back at this time as the favorite years of my adult life. I can't see forever, but I know that it's there. Out beyond the farthest buoy, I could see from my beach chair. It was one of a pair. That my parents bought us for the first summer after the wedding. Being all consumed by our kids in their life, with them bringing us endless happiness and laughter. As they grow older and into their own people, the relationship with our kids has evolved. But we're looking forward to seeing who they grow up to be. And now, I think I can finally put a wrap on this film nearly 20 years in the making. Thanks for watching. Now back to the credits. Bye-bye. Every minute of every day, oh, I'm sick of it. My kids are grown, they got kids of their own. And they're a real pain in the ass, but I love them anyway.
almost everything Gave the other to my granddaughter On her first trip down the shore But now she says it's uncomfortable So I sit alone 